Hi, I'm Emily from Lake Kim, and we're here at Ted Williams Park for the first Halloween Pet Parade. And it's all to benefit Unconditional Love Pet Rescue. Bella, she's four years old. She was adopted from Tennessee and we come here because we like to support all animal fundraiser events and she loves to come out and donate and see other dogs. About. We went online on adoptapet.com uh, adopt and then we found these little guys and I fell in love with Oliver. But once my son held Ollie, I can't let go of both of them, so we're taking both home. They're brothers. They're from the same litter. So Diana was telling us where they haven't been separated yet, and I just thought it would be best that they could be kept together. Hi, my name's Gail Trink, and I'm here at the Family Fun Pet Parade, which is a fundraiser uh, to benefit the Unconditional Love Pet Rescue. Um, I adopted two puppies from the Unconditional Love Pet Rescue this past March. Originally was just going to adopt one, but fell in love with two of them. Um, and Diane, who runs the rescue, is just so wonderful that um, she does you know, so much to educate the public about um, adopting pets and um, about the importance of spay and neutering your dogs, um, that I just wanted to give back and help her so that she could continue to um, do the things that she does. So. Um, so I held this fundraiser. We had some raffles and some events for the kids. It was a great, great turnout for our first year. You know, there's lots of dogs that showed up with cute costumes. Like we, you know, we had a, a lot of great donations as far as our silent auctions. Um, those were a, a big hit in our, in our raffle baskets. Um, we did a 50-50 raffle as well. So it looked like we raised a, a good amount of money. Previous to adopting these two, I had just gotten um, purebred bred, uh, dogs, but I just really wanted to rescue. And so I went online and I looked around at all different rescues. And you know, once I got on the phone with Diane and heard about um, you know what she was doing, she does more than just the rescue. She um, has this whole campaign on education, and that's what I was so impressed with. You know, she's building this dog town, as she calls it, at her rescue, which is, um, you know, many buildings to house, um, you know, her puppies and her animals, but also one of the buildings is, um, she calls the schoolhouse, which will be to um, bring in school-aged children um, to come in so that they can learn about the rescue and they can learn about the importance of spay and neutering your animals, which is a problem down in the south. Um, and so, you know, if she can change the next generation, that's really what is going to make the huge, a huge difference in, um, you know, decreasing the number of, of neglected and homeless dogs. So um, that's why I chose to, to rescue from her and why I continue to support her and um, fundraise for her. This is the very first fundraiser I've ever done. I'm, I'm usually the one that attends them and, and I'm more comfortable giving to a fundraiser. I'm not as comfortable asking for people to give to me. So it was, um, it was a learning experience. Um, and 
it, it was, I've learned a lot from this this event, and I think next year I already have tons of, of ideas, and um, you know, hopefully it'll be twice as big. So, yeah, I love it. You know, it's it it it's good for my soul to, to you know to help out animals. It's definitely my passion. I'm Diane Ferguson and founder of Unconditional Love Pet Rescue. Um, we are up here today at an event um, mostly to bring awareness to the domestic problem, domestic pet problem down in the south. It's not even a problem anymore, it's a crisis. Um, wonderful dogs like these two boys, which this one here is Quillen and this one in front is Quickster. And they are getting dumped left and right. We rescue these dogs and we get them healthy, we get them spayed and neutered, and we try to educate the area on how to take care of the dogs and get the importance of spay and neuter so that the problem can be taken care of and hopefully not have this many puppies that are unwanted and abandoned. Um, but there are areas like these two boys were dumped, they're called com common dumping grounds and people will just go and drop off their animals for whatever reason, they're moving, they can't afford them anymore. Um, spaying and neuter is not as well known or, or done as much down there, and a lot of people can't afford it, plain and simple. So we try to offer spay and neuter programs. We go around and spay and neuter people who can't get their animals done. We take in the puppies, we get them homes. We're, transport every weekend to Ohio, Maryland, Virginia, New York, Connecticut, um, all over Maine, Vermont, um, just to help these guys find homes. And a lot of people from the north say, why should we help the dogs from the south? But I'm a New Yorker and I'm down there and I would have never ever realized the problem and how great it is. It's a whole different world and they need help and I feel instead of being a New Yorker I'm an American and I want to help the dogs. I'm an animal lover and they need the help down there so that's why we're bringing awareness to all the states of how desperate the dogs and the cats are in the south. I mean dogs like this run around all over and um, there's not enough rescues to take them all in and there's no homes down there because even the people that take in the dogs that are dumped then they end up overrun so it is a big problem quickster and quillen mother was dumped and she was pregnant and the people that took them in live in a common dumping area so she took them in and she took care of the puppies and then she reached out for rescues to help and that's how these two boys came in. And so her mom got spayed and these two boys are going to get adopted and then at least that's three more that aren't going to produce any more dogs. And that's the general idea is to get them spayed and neutered. We can't say it enough and they, we need help down there. Um, I think we all should pitch in. The reason why we're having this event today is really to bring awareness because uh, even the, when I went down there I had no concept. Everybody from the north 
really it's it's impossible to have a concept of the way it is down in the south because you, there aren't the problems up here and you've got the shelters they're not overcrowded so if we bring the awareness of the problem from the south then we'll get more adoptions and then maybe more oops i sorry mommy sorry um help in getting spay neuter programs so that the rescues that are down there can get funded so that we can go around and get the dogs spayed and neutered and bring them up to bring, get them homes. I know I love you too because these dogs are wonderful dogs. Yes. And the more people are aware then the more help that we'll get and then we won't have the problem down there either because the problem is taken care of up here. Um, so that's where the help comes, really. Plus adoptions, of course, um, that always helps. But really the bigger picture is education. I mean, we've got that big van, we're gonna start putting advertising on it to create the awareness of the domestic pet crisis down in the South. Because the people in the North don't know. I mean, you, you just don't know. I didn't. Well, I, I actually went down into Arkansas to be a photographer and I went to the local Humane Society to volunteer and take pictures of their pets and I was I was shocked I was actually shocked because you're used to seeing a pound with like maybe 10 20 dogs in it and there was hundred um, and the dogs were all in the kennels they weren't getting fed I mean some of the kennels some of the rescues they don't have the money they need and these dogs, they literally, the puppies were dying in the kennel. Um, they were dying right there. So I started by grabbing up the puppies, getting them to the vet. They're freezing down there. A lot of them don't have it. They're in metal dog houses out in the winter time. It's ice storms. So we went around and we brought straw and stuffed the dog houses with straw. And there was a group of us that uh, all started. and. That's what got me started was because I thought I didn't have a concept of how big the problem was. So I, I thought, okay, I'll get these guys helped out and we'll get the, the dogs adopted out and the numbers down and we'll be good and I'll go. It doesn't happen. You, it doesn't stop. There's so many dogs down there that they don't stop coming. And there's, that's why all of a sudden instead of adopting, our slogan now is, we will adopt one by one and educate until there is not none. Education is the key. That's we got to educate the, everybody in the surrounding states and up north and west about the problem. Period, and of spay and neuter, so that these dogs won't suffer, or the cats. The cat problems is everywhere also. But um, events like this bring the children. The children are our future. So if we can teach the children about the problems and the importance of spaying neuter, then in the future there may be a difference because it'll be too hard to make a difference in the present. <laughs> I've been rescuing for eight years down in Arkansas and another couple years down in Florida. And so I think I created Unconditional Love in 2010. I think that's when I but I had been rescuing down there before that without a rescue of my own. I was just helping the, the, the humane societies down there. And we go everywhere. I mean, the problems are horrible. Um, we go help other rescues that are overcrowded and take in their dogs and adopt out their puppies, um, get them spayed and neutered. Um, so that's our, our main goal is to help get the numbers down and to educate, educate, educate right now. There's um, people that are putting in applications. We don't adopt on the spot. We want to interview the people and make sure that they're good homes. And then we will finalize the adoption probably during the week. But yes, there's, they've got a lot of attention. There's so many wonderful people here. Well, I know it. He's so anxious to go see him and play. I know he wants to go play with the children. We're going to come back next year and make it bigger and better. So I hope we see you all then.